Hey, this is Ryan Leary and William Tincup, and it is... <laughs> is, it, is it Ryan Leary? <laughs> Dude, what are you doing? You can't laugh. <laughs> what are you doing? You're supposed I to just usually, put your name first. Usually people say their name first. Yeah. Okay, this is William Tincup. Let's they, see Ryan Leary. They can see the two people. <laughs> it's not like we have someone <laughs> hidden. Hey, you called me off guard. All right, we'll shut up. All right. You know what I like about iSolved? Everything. I solved is people centric. And in a people centric world, you need a people centric solution. I solved People Cloud is a comprehensive human capital management solution that helps you employ, enable, and empower your workforce throughout the entire employment lifecycle. From tracking to recruiting to onboarding and compliance, from payroll to benefits to time and labor management, transform your employee experience for a better today and a better tomorrow with iSolved. For more information, go to iSolvedHCM.com. Hey, this is William Tincup and Ryan Leary. This is The Barf. It's April 7th, Sunday. Hopefully we can prepare you for next week by looking back at this previous week on news and acquisitions and uh, research and funding and all kinds of fun stuff. We've got a lot of great stories to pitch each other. If you're not familiar with the show, basically Ryan and I pitch each other kind of things that we saw this week. So during the week, we kind of keep track of stuff that we see is think is pretty cool and all work-related. Or we'll tie it back to what we think is work-related. We do a little bit of editorial. And then we also try to give you the the links to where these things are so that you can go and do your own research and come to your own conclusions as well. So, so translation is we find things that we feel are interesting. That's right. And that's try right. to make it useful for work. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. We should just drop that in chat GPT and, and see if they can shorten that down and to like four it, words. And see what it says. So a funny story real quick. I know you always mention John Oliver with this, right? It's her yes. John Oliver show. I've never real. I've seen him a few times here and there. Right. But I saw – he. I guess he did a show on uh, gig workers. He, part of his thing was on gig workers and somebody okay. had – Brought up and said, you need to listen to this because they were arguing that, that DoorDash is bad, you know, for all this stuff. He uses a laugh track. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think like, he does that. At, I, I, I believe that's out of sarcasm. It annoyed the hell out of me. <laughs> it really well, if did. Back, dude, if you go back to any of the shows from the 80s, they all have laugh tracks. But it's all... 2023, I know, 2024. I, I think it's ironic. <laughs> Maybe that's that's the bit. It's not maybe not sarcasm. Uh, maybe it's I more on I, irony. I couldn't get. I couldn't get through. Just... It. I, all I could hear is a, ha ha ha. Hold <laughs> on. Oh, no, actually, I think I think we we have one here. Yeah, <laughs> it's basically what it sounded like. <laughs> Dude, so anyway, he he was talking I, about he was talking about um, DoorDash and how it's bad. Bad. For restaurants, and I, I fully disagree with this. Uh, although, you know, I, right? I mean, you know, yeah, because they have to, because they have to pay a fee. Well, everyone has to pay a fee. It's a, it's a software. You got to yeah. support yeah. it, and pay for yeah. it, and all that. Turns out, anyway, if you don't want to leave your house, and but you want that food, you know, that's not hurting anybody. I, I've been to, I say, I've been, I've ordered from yeah. a number of restaurants that I would never have gone to. Right. Ever. So if they're getting 75% of my order value to the restaurant, that's 75% more than they would have ever got. Yeah. Yeah. Because I Let's... would, one, have never heard of them if it didn't right. show up in the app. And two, I'm probably not driving 10 miles to go get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's this is true of like specialty restaurants. Like there's a great Lebanese restaurant close to us. And I would have, I, I always, it was there when I was in high school. It's called The Prince. And it's uh, it's Lebanese food. I've driven past this place <laughs> thousands and you never of know. times. And and Michael, my you know, my wife ordered from it, and she loves it. So you know, it's like again yeah. to your point, the uh, some of the I think the specialty restaurants in particular, they get an uptick in business from people that would have never cared or found anything, gotten those customers. So. Yeah, I think right. that's just a dumb take, but that's okay. Not all <sighs> things are great. All right, what I got, got a story. I want to kick right. off here. Do it. So I don't really have a thought here, so I'll leave right. it to you to give a thought. Sure. Um, well, I've got some thoughts, but I'll leave it to you. Transgender 
Chick-fil-A workers sexual harassment case may go to trial. I got two for this. Mm-hmm. And Yi is once again accused of racial discrimination right. and anti-Semitism. So this this whole thing with Chick-fil-A, so we, we've done Subway, we've done um, – yeah. Who are the other one? The other ones? We, the last oh, couple lot of weeks. A lot of a lot of hourly stealing workers. tips and yeah. yeah, stealing tips and sexual harassment and and all, and all of this all of this stuff. Anyway, the so the franchise owner has unsuccessfully argued that the worker couldn't be subjected to sexual harassment by her coworkers because she is heterosexual. Yeah, that's a weak argument. Yeah, so I need to leave this to you because I just think it's asinine, number yeah. one, the fact that it may go to trial because of this. It should go to trial. It I mean, again, it's, if it's if, it, if if there's something trial-worthy, let's let's make sure we say that. If you go to McDonald's and, and, and coffee spills on you, coffee's hot, it turns out. So, like, don't, some, yeah. not everything should end up well, in no, the legal That system. case actually did go. I know, I know. A long, I know. remember that a long time ago. They, then they had to put on lids. Coffee is hot. Is hot. I'm like, this is just a fucking dumbing of America. <laughs> if you don't know that coffee's hot, you probably shouldn't live. I'm you just gonna. I'm, to I'm gonna go. Her. I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, yeah. I think with the with it with transgender in particular, I think first of all, harassment's harassment. Harassment's harassment. And, and you should we should have zero tolerance for for that in the workplace. And if this was sexual harassment, even more egregious, if you will, and it doesn't yeah. matter what her gender is or his or whatever the gender harassment is. Harassment, harassment. They, yeah, they, them, yeah, so, doesn't matter. So the definition of workplace harassment, I'm going to read this because it's pretty clear. Workplace harassment occurs when there is unwelcome conduct based on race, yeah. color, religion, sex, including sexual orientation, gender right. identity, or pregnancy, national origin, older yep. age, dis- disability, or genetic information, according to the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. EEOC. Yep. Yeah. Straight up been that way for uh, – I mean they've added some things to it, but it's been that way for as long as I can remember actually. Is what it is, and ye, I don't know what's going on with Diddy, but he's back in the news, so those guys taking over the news again. Yeah. Nothing to do with work? Well, I guess technically it could. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah it's technically work. It's some yeah. sex work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, so, that is true. That somebody's is working. True. That is true. My bad. <laughs> Anyhow, it's a horrible yeah. story, and uh, hopefully it doesn't end up being the, you know, more like Jeffrey Epstein than not. So, right. Uh, Employ, which uh, the audience would know as a lot of different companies, uh, so okay. Jobbyte, Lever, Jazz HR, um, they have a brand new CEO, Steve Cox, is yep. just brought in and brought in. He's got 20, 25 years of experience. Not only a new CEO, but once you dig into it, they brought in. Uh, they they have a board, new board chairman. So what I think this is is K one is which is the P. Uh, firm that's behind uh, employee is cleaning up all the the acquisitions, right? And it might take a year or two for them to kind of get things together, but I think this is a really good sign. Yeah, uh, bring in a Miss- new CEO. They don't have any of the baggage of like Pete was the CEO of Jazz HR, right? So you know, and he great guy. I mean, you and I talked to him in January. Mm-hmm. Just just a wonderful person. Um, but now you take somebody from the outside who's got seasoned experience, maybe not doesn't know the market as much. Who cares? Yeah. N- now they can look at things in an objective way and go prune that, add this, don't do that. You know. So I think it's going to be a good thing. I don't know if we're going to see it right it right away, but I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And they did they did acquisition a couple of years now. Those are yeah. a couple of years, and yeah, they've been running and time to clean it up. So. I've got an OSHA story. Um, okay. So I'm not sure if you saw this, um, but uh, OSHA, uh, so the walker, it's called the walk around rule. Yeah. Uh, so this is the, essentially it's the classic case of workplace retaliation is, is what this <laughs> is helping to prevent, right? So right. this sucks at work. Okay. You're not getting promoted, right? Right. You give a tip, you blow the whistle, 
to get smacked somehow, some way, or at least the fear of retaliation. Right? So I think this is this, this is what this is. This is a classic case of workplace retaliation and helping to prevent that uh, on job sites. And so we just spoke with um, what's his name. We haven't released the episode yet. Your story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I. <laughs> can't remember <laughs> so anyway we spoke this will to definitely gentleman. be edited out <laughs> no i'll leave it i'll leave it in i'll leave it in okay i'll leave it right. no, we, sure. we spoke, we were speaking about workplace safety right so so anyhow this is third they're now employees I, you're making me you're making me crazy here work so employees are allowed to bring third parties have a third party present during walk arounds for safety walks safety oh, walk around okay right and so now they have a way one to have a third party present third party third party uh safety person present to see what's going on in the workplace and we're and this is any workplace but my example is and i see this a lot in, in instruction um but also a way to anonymously uh leave that tip which exists in a lot of companies today, but this now formalizes that process to help prevent. I like that. Yeah, to help, to help prevent the retaliation. Anything that prevents retaliation, good stuff. Yeah, oh, absolutely. All right. Indeed launches AI-powered product called Smart Sourcing, designed to make hiring faster. This can be found on cxotoday.com, or they can be found in many places. So. Think of candidates as perishable goods. Smart sourcing is kind of it, what it does is it, it actually helps both the candidates and the recruiters and, yeah. and their frustration levels, to quite be quite honest. Things are slow, et cetera. Matches aren't great. Anyhow, it we've tested it out. It's fast, it's accurate, great move for indeed and great move for those two those two groups of people. Yeah, well, what I like about this this play here is a lot of people uh, lump Indeed as like the old guy, right? right. They, they've been around forever, right? And, right. And and they they do a lot of innovative stuff yep. that they don't necessarily come out and say, "Hey, look at what we're doing." And and this is one of those things where it's it's this gets us out of keyword matching. Right. Right. So we, we talked about this previously where uh, there's a subset of a large subset of recruiting that enters keyword once result. Right. 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 right, right. This, this now there are other tools out here that do things like this. This just happens to be uh, smart sourcing through Indeed, which it has I, I think it was fantastic just seeing well, what we saw. Sitting on 300 million, million plus yeah. profiles. That's a lot of data. Yes, so that's a lot of data. So it's you can matching get matching and pulling and learning all of that. Absolutely. It's yep. I, I think it's a win. I think it's something to certainly look out look out for. All right, you all right. Me... Oh, go ahead. You got another another one? You wanna go for another go? Yeah, for let it? me go for a couple of them. All right. So this is a this is a that first of all you term. don't want to hear my voice. No, no, no. No, no. Let, no. let me I'll just go voice. for a couple. Yeah, yeah. I'll just kind of read my entire sheet. <laughs> so this is a word that I hadn't been, I wasn't familiar with. If femtech, not fin, femtech. So okay. the article is on Crunchbase, and it's the next frontier of femtech, which focuses on women's health and wellness. And then I started kind of like, well, what's the population of women in America? It's fifty point five one. So let's just say fifty, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can round it up to fifty one if you want. So what what I think this is why I think this is important for us to think about is we're going to start seeing more wellness programs designed by women for women, which yeah. I think is really really cool. And uh, so so femtech get familiar with the term and also start to look for those plays that are going to be coming to you in the form of wellness. Yeah, this is interesting. I I like so. Younger Ryan would say, why can't it just be wellness? <laughs> right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, turns out. Yeah. Older, experienced Ryan says, I'm okay with different groups of people. 100%. And now that I think it's okay, it's okay. Like, I get that, yeah. right? It's, it's accepted now. Different groups, of, it's okay for different groups of people to have different programs to help better that particular class or group of people. Hundred percent. 
and it's something that younger me, like I said, I mean, I was kind of like, well, why? Why do women need this, or why do Jews need this, or why do whites need this, or blacks? So, so need this? I'll give you two examples that we both uh, of mm-hmm. us probably at eighteen wouldn't have even considered. Women are disproportionately impacted by insurance, like right. their they their insurance costs more, which again is mm-hmm. arguable as, as to why. Um, but also, the female biology is more complex than the male biology. Right. So, I mean, these are just facts. So, like, yeah. I, I think when you think of femtech, that, uh, again, female founders creating technology for female customers, I just think yeah. it's a good thing. I think it helps everybody in the workforce. No, absolutely. All right. Chat GPT. Um, right. Yeah. I know it's overplayed at this point, but chat GPT. So use is up. Okay. Yep. And essentially for those that are under the age of 30. So this is part of this is uh, some of my AI AI assistant. Everyone's going to have an AI assistant theory that I bring up kind of like my four day work week that we're never going to do. I think this supports that. And so I like the story. Um, so on the surface, okay, this is just another goofy, cheesy chat GPT buzzword worthy story, right? Like, Hey, we're using chat GPT, but what's happening here is that, so the, and I'll drop the link in. I forgot where I found this. It's, uh, it's one of these stories, HR dive, maybe, um, anyhow, 31% of those that are between 18 and 29 years old said that they've used chat gpt last month in the last month yeah, in last work days. for work related tasks to help them complete a work related task so i think we we talk about this all the time and i know sometimes stories stories can be stretched to to fit certain things but i think this is really starting to show and and we know this, but I think it's starting to show that the workplace is fundamentally changing because yeah. as the age of the employee gets higher, the use of technology and the use of AI assisted technology drops significantly into the right. teams. And so I think what this is, what this is showing us is that the, the, the workplace is changing, the technology in the workplace is changing and you're going to have to, jump on this wagon here to support your employees, especially your younger employees that are now growing up in your, in your company. I'll say something relatively bold. If you're not using chat GPT for work, no, no. If you're not using it for work right now, you should probably be fired. Like or a form of gen AI, I should say like something. Again, uh, if you're not using already, you're you're already you're already dated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're already used. There's an inefficiency to your time. Like when your boss asks you, "Hey, that meeting was great. Can you summarize that for me?" If you're not throwing that into Chat GPT, mm-hmm. kicking it out, sending it to him, <laughs> then you should be fired. <laughs> Period. End of story. Like not all salmon make it up the river. Yeah, how how far in the way? We're about 20 minutes in. Okay, so I can tell this story because I know my wife won't listen this far if she listens at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alex, that's a great start. <laughs> swim team board. We sit on the swim team board, right? Right. We have board meetings. She's the secretary and has the notes. Right. She sits there and reads the notes. Oh, and summarizes the notes and does Ooh. the notes and then types them in. So, like, will you give me the goddamn notes? <laughs> Stick them in. Like, we God. use Zoom. We're on Zoom for the call, right? So use yeah, a Zoom yeah. AI. Use Fathom or Firefly. Something. Stop spending three hours, literally three hours, yeah. going through the notes and trying to remember this. And just use the system. Use yeah. the tech to get okay. it done. Done. I don't know. All right. I got a. I'm jumping ahead, but I've got an acquisition uh, okay. to run through. So Career Arc uh, acquires a recruitment video platform, uh, Lumina. Yeah. So 
not to be confused with Lumina, my right. webcam technology, right. Right. but Lumina, the video company. So I, I love the people at career arc. I love when companies acquire other companies or, or, or integrate other companies and in tech into their current tech to make it better. I'm not sure on this. Um, I Ooh. think it's going to be good for them. Let me, let me just, I, it's going to be good. Yes. Okay. Said, stated, done, all that good stuff. Right. But why just now? Video, I don't think video, and I know I'll get hate for this. I don't think video is the now like it was in 2015. Uh, I'm going to disagree with you. A, the acquisition gets you customers of Lumina. It, they, they're all bringing of that over, is good, yes. Uh, they're bringing over the CEO from Lumina to run career art. Correct. Yep. So talent. B or subpart C is career arc is known pretty well known is social recruiting, but yes. they're not known for video recruiting. And what this does is it opens them up and their customers up, up to do recruiting via video, YouTube shorts, you know, uh, yeah. Instagram reels, TikTok, etc. So it just adds it adds a couple more arrows to the quiver. Great acquisition. Yeah. So yes to all of that, yeah. and I agree. But what's next? Why I feel like video it, is is just they're not thinking about what's next. They're thinking about yeah. what what can they do to expand the footprint in their in their customer base right now. Right. And right. they're they they didn't grow up through the lens of video. They grew up with Twitter and Facebook, LinkedIn, right? Kind of the usual stuff. That was their thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. No. All right. Two news stories. Let me pitch you on the economic cost of the Baltimore Bridge collapse. How many jobs mm. do you think were impacted by that bridge? Impacted? How? Like uh, not being able to get to work and things like that? Yep. 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 All those things. I'm going to say 30,000. It'd be 140,000 jobs. <laughs> they're impacted. 140,000 140, jobs. So 140,000 jobs, it impacted those folks. You can find this on brookings.edu, uh, and you can kind of get into the entire entire thing and how they justify their math. But it, it really made me think about when disasters happen, how often do we think of the impacts of jobs lost? Like we think about, yeah. you know, the houses and the buildings and the stuff like that, but I don't know if I've ever thought about when a hurricane hits, like Hurricane Harvey hit Galveston and Houston. I don't think at any point during that that I think of, I wonder how many jobs it's going to have. So I think what I want for the audience, I want you to think about, it's an El, it's an El Nino year. We're about to start hurricane season. Yep. Um, um, start thinking about those things and just add that to how you think about them. And uh, so that's the bit. Just think about how the, I mean, they did it with mm. Baltimore Bridge. Great, fantastic. That wasn't a natural disaster, as we as we all know. Right. But disasters happen. Now let's start thinking about not just the economic impact, but the jobs impact. So yeah, that's that's interesting. One hundred and forty thousand. One hundred and forty k. That's that's a that lot of people. A lot. Yeah, that's yeah. A, it's a, a lot, lot of, of travel. A lot of people moving on that bridge. Yeah. Yep. No, absolutely. All right. The the um different story but similar sort of the on a on a on the economy the direct path of the um eclipse did you see so, the economic so, uh yes i didn't see the numbers but it, it goes over us it goes over dallas the, okay okay yeah so it's close well i think we're gonna get like 90 percent. so we don't have to travel to see it no it's like it's a little over a billion in economic value between, um, you know, all those in that area, things, you know, restaurants, selling, rentals, all of that stuff. Airbnb is completely sold out the entire stretch. Yeah. So, so. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get a little hate mail on this. I don't really care about eclipses. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my my sons, they're they, you know they're going to go to school. They're going to go outside. Yeah, they've already yeah, had yeah. guest speakers talking about this shit. I don't. Yeah. The, it the doesn't happens every year and a half to two years somewhere in the world. 
Right. Not necessarily in Dallas, Texas, or on that path, whatever. Right. So, like, right. I get that bit, but I don't give a shit. Like, yeah. I just don't care about the eclipse. Like, okay, it happens. Yeah. It doesn't and, excite, excite me. It does, yeah. dude. It does like watching excited. paint dry. I mean, I've done this yeah. bit before. I remember when I did it when I was younger. I'm like, okay, the moon and uh, yeah, did, yeah. then. Well, the, the last one was a couple of years ago. We're out there yeah. with the glasses and we're like, it's almost there. Yeah, it's, it's one just, and a half minutes uh, that I'd rather have back in my life. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, all right, let me yeah, give you another news story real quick. So, um, over 500,000 fast food workers in California just got a huge raise thanks to a new law that went into effect April 1st, and that is $20 minimum wage. What? $20 yeah. minimum Sorry, wage? Sorry, baby. And well, where is this at? In California. So they're still homeless. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. Unless you're living inward, like Sacramento, that might work for you. Uh, but no. Anyway, yeah, like, like, like when I when I thought when I read the story, first of all, you can find that on Yahoo Finance or finance.yahoo.com. And what I thought about is, I'm like, okay, how soon does this hit pricing? So this is a cost. Cost just went up, right? Great. Check. Mm -hmm. We all get that. But how soon does the price of the burger goes up? or the ice cream or whatever you're yeah. getting, they're, they're going to have to recoup their costs. It's not like they're going to re yeah. keep their costs the same. So, no, And how willing it, is somebody to pay 100%. 50 cents more for a burger? I'm not, which which I'm not made me lie. think of the Pulp Fiction bit where John Travolta is a $5 shake, which today doesn't seem like anything, but in 94, it was, it was a I big wish. thing. <laughs> so... And it's like, it's a $5 shake. And he, he's like, $5 shake? You know, that's crazy. And he tastes it, and he's like, it's a pretty good shake. Oh. The, we're going to get, like, $20 hamburgers in California. Yeah, so, that's... So, anyhow. The price of food changes how good it is. I'm just going to, I got to say that. Yeah? Like, I can have a $30 steak somewhere, and it's delicious. Then I go somewhere, and it's $80. I'm like, eh. Not so good because be I paid Wagyu. eighty dollars. Yeah. I paid yeah. eighty dollars. I don't care how good. It, I mean, it's, it changes my thought. Yeah, I don't. I don't look at prices, so I'm on the other end of the spectrum. Uh, I I order what I want, and I just don't think about the price. <laughs> then the it's bill like, comes in your washing dishes. Yeah, well, no, good. no. I, I, <laughs> and again, I don't pay for a lot of stuff, so maybe that's <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> All right, oh, let me. I got I got two acquisitions. I'll go through very quickly. All right, since you already did the career arc one. Um, this is uh, ESOP, E A S O P, yeah, acquired is, by yeah. uh -huh. Remote. Yep. yep. Love um, it. So basically, think of compensation staff for that for ESOP and Remote. Think of them as the, what this is going to do is facilitate equity management for international employees so we've talked about remote before we talked about event funding yeah. and the things that they do they they help people all over the world be able to get paid so there's that yeah. now they can actually with compensation software they can they can do more than just pay they can actually facilitate stock options and things like that right. so great i mean i look at that and i'm like you know what that, they could have built it why build it just it's, go buy it and yeah. uh so good good for them and their customers mm -hmm. second acquisition ita group acquires cool leaf to form industry leading employment engagement solutions so you can find this at ita group it's on their site so it's press release mm -hmm. ita group.com so th when you think of ita group think employee engagement but when you think uh, cool leaf think rewards and recognition so these things usually are separated mm -hmm. and what they've done with this acquisition is brought those things together together and i th i think that this is going to be really good for their customers because what they're trying to do is reduce turnover and improve productivity now you've got it one one place so you remember last year we talked about how practitioners want less tech yeah, yeah. this is a great example of that bit Okay, now if they're already an ITA group a customer, now they can do their rewards and recognition inside the same interface. So, yeah. uh, great acquisition. Love it. Love it. All right. All right. 
So you got any other acquisitions or are we on to the R? No, no, I've got another. I want to talk about UPS real quick. Okay. Tell me about the, the ups. The ups company. What do we got? <laughs> the ups company. All right. So they are having their largest layoff in their entire 116 year wow. existence. Okay. Uh, so this is interesting, interesting to me because it's we're not just talking layoffs here. So over the last, I guess it was 30, whatever it was, 4,000 people lost their jobs directly related right. to the adoption of AI in the, uh, in the workplace. Really? <clears throat> huh. Excuse me, I'm dying here. I need some water. Um, so UPS is going through a layoff, and they are right. stating directly, it's directly because of their adoption of oh, new man, technology, should... AI mm. in the workforce. Now – Sound the alarms. It's a bad look. That. Yeah, bad look, all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, you can get into the argument. I've seen debates or arguments in, <clears throat> on oh, Ford brought in the machines, and they still have – I get it, right? Like you innovate, you, you need to scale up. I get it. Okay, so what I really liked about this, in, in the same article, uh, it, it gave examples of, of companies like IBM and right. Intel. Uh, who together, different numbers, of course, but together, they pledged about 30 million people before 2030 to skill the people right. in AI, how to right. work with AI, how to uh, how to use AI in the job. So not their – obviously their employees, but not just their employees, actually in the workforce just – upskilling people on right. how to work and leverage with AI. Um, so anyhow, so it's estimated that over the next 10 years, roughly 95 million people will go right. through some form of AI upskilling in the workforce. If you don't do it on your own and you're expecting the business to do it for you, right? Um, it's all about literacy. It's all yeah. about yeah. having some form of literacy. Again, getting back to the story you brought up earlier about ChatGPT, <laughs> if you're not using it, you should be fired if you're not exactly. increasing your literacy uh about ai exactly. and gen ai it's that's homie that's on you yeah no ab absolutely is and I, i'm glad I like that companies that are large, tackling it yeah yeah i love that these larger companies are stepping in and, and saying like hey look we're basically what they're saying and it's a smart move what they're saying is okay we're building this crap like yeah we're gonna be power like our companies run we're Lots we're the ones yeah. behind this right we also need you to work for us, so we're just going to go and get you skilled up. Yeah, I like that. All yeah. right, I got, I got three um, research, three R's for you, and I'm going to go through them really quickly. Work Tech, which is our friend George Larock, mm -hmm. um, just did a, a Q1 report, uh, Q1 report on the amount of funding that was in just those three months, and it was over a billion. Ooh. Now, yeah, so you can go to one one worktech.com and then you can sign in and, and get the report and all that stuff nobody gave the, us money no the key is for for as you listen to this the key is is follow the money that's why investments that's why we talk so much about funding and acquisitions and things like that because as a practitioner you might not be you might not care but it you should care because where people are making investments it'll end up impacting you Right. Maybe months, maybe years, but it's a leading indicator. So that's that. Hey, you you got any commentary on that? Are we good? No, that's a lot of money. I'm going to have to go look at it and, that's a billion, money baby. and see where it's at. Yeah. So second thing, this is from livecareer.com. Uh, this is the a report, Fears and Remote Work. At first when I read it, I thought fear of remote work. No, it's, fe it's fears. And remote work, four thousand respondents. So pretty good, pretty good size of data yeah. pool. Let me read you two points from it. Forty-three percent of workers say that they are more afraid of working in an office full time than losing their romantic relationship or getting divorced. Wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Rewind that. So forty-three percent yeah. of working in an office. Yeah. I Dude, have a I, fear of waking up, but I don't sleep all goddamn day. 
Forty-three percent of of workers say they are more afraid of working in an office full time than losing a romantic relationship or getting divorced. So either they have shitty relationships and they just <laughs> don't care. They don't, they don't care, or they're this is a real legit forty-three percent man. That's a big number out of four thousand. How do you fear working in an office? <laughs> uh, dude, either are you I sure you read the title right? I swear to God, I swear, I had to go back and read it like five times because yes, it, it, it's at livecareer.com. Fantastic, go look at because they have other ones too. I'll read the next one because I think it's <laughs> I just think it's funny. Fifty three percent fear the prospect of full time office work more than climate change. Wait, so this, this is, is a separate to, report. No, this is back to a live career. This is I oh, was going to give two data points. So. People care about data, uh, climate change. Check. That 53% of people fear more of full-time office work than they do climate change. Huh. Huh. Right? Hmm. So let that – again, go and download the report. The reason we do this is is to find these things so that you can go and do your own analysis. But we we, hmm. we want you to go and do this. Now, Ryan, if I – this is the next story. Next story. So hit the button. I'm still trying. My head still hurts from the last one. <laughs> so if I were to say cyber loafing, what would you say? <laughs> yeah, that's what I would probably You got say. nothing? I got right. nothing. <laughs> so sciencedirect.com has, has a report. It's actually a study. It's an academic study. The effects and, of sanctions and stigmas on cyber loafing. So this is basically uh, hybrid, remote, or at work. So they, they, they don't bifurcate. But they do bifurcate in in terms of the things you do online. Viewing pornography, managing finances, and shopping at work are were rated as abusive. Emailing and social networking at work were, were rated as not abusive. So again, like like the, what you do when it's work. And again, whether or not you're remote, hybrid, or at the office, it's great. The study, you're not doing work, so you're doing something else on your phone, on on your device, whatever. You're cyber loafing. <laughs> I gotta say that word more cyber times than once. Loafing. You're, you're cyber loafing. I feel like this is the, the section where we build T-shirts. We create yeah. T-shirts. Yeah, yeah. So, are you a cyber loafer? Great. So. So the thing is, is the study itself then bifurcates all the different things that you could do to cyber loaf and then makes the determination of which ones are more egregious than the others, mm. which I find fascinating. But go look at the, the study, and I, I think we're, we're going to hear cyber loafing more often. Well, we will now. Yeah. <laughs> I, wanna, I just want to get into your browser search bar. And I want to see how you're finding this stuff. <laughs> I don't know that I actually want to. No, you don't. Um, dude, seriously, don't, don't ask. You don't yeah. want to see how the sausage is made. That's about All right. it. So I was reading this thing the other day on employment law, which is certainly not my favorite thing to read. Um, it's becoming. You're, you're it, starting to become an expert here. It's it's becoming interesting. Yeah, the more I read, the more I'm like, oh, what am I yeah. missing all my life? It's like yeah. reading Harry Potter, which I never read. <laughs> so, all right. did you know this? Well, you're going to say yes. So, I'll just say yes, you do. Yeah, 88% of disputes are considered settled before a trial is needed in the workplace. Oh, 100%. Sure, I'm, I'm I'm shocked that that number is not higher. Yeah, so don't, companies don't want that that shit to to see the light of day. Right. So this is kind of like this is kind of like companies saying, you know what? Mm-mm, mm-mm. We know you're full of shit, but yeah, we'll write two million dollar check. Go we're away. just going to get rid of this. Right. That's exactly what's happening. Think of it. Think of the math that's really being being done behind that. So yeah. two million dollars in customer retention or, or the lack of acquisition etc morale right. like all of that all stuff of or you know billy gets a two million dollar check and it gets an nda and uh and, and it's gone. gone yeah so i think the 12 percent on that 88 is the ones where they think a it's not going to damage us b we right. can win the case 
Right, and it's just let's go right. and get it done. So, yeah. so in this report, there are ten. I'm not going to go through all ten, but there are ten trends that came out on top in this in this survey to to watch. The top four, which I think are pretty common sense to us, discrimination and harassment. Yeah, I'm uh, Pay issues. Okay, so pay yeah. equity twin, uh, twins trends. <laughs> Wage, uh, hourly disputes, wage uh, for hourly wage, uh, employee classifications. That was interesting yep. for me. Uh, so 37% said that employee classific- classifications were likely to uh, bring litigation risk. And so this yeah. is specifically tied to gig workers yep. and freelancers. How do we classify them in the employee population? Uh, and then disability accommodations, which I thought would be higher. Um, well, I thought that would be a little hard. We haven't even tackled neurodivergent uh, accommodation. They didn't specifically call that out in there. Uh, yeah, that, that uh, number will hit that the in. list. Yeah, and, and, and it, they might throw it under disability, but you know that's that's incorrectly placed. But yeah, that tracks for me. Yeah, yeah. I got seven funding. This has been a heavy week in funding. <laughs> seven <laughs> funding sources. Do you have yeah. some in funding? I do. I have. I have. Um, I have a couple funding. Yeah. Okay. You want me to um, rattle, rattle rattle through a couple? And yeah. You? I'll you, why don't you just rattle through because you probably got the same, and I'll mm. uh, I'll give you my love on them. All right. Home base raises sixty million. Series D to fuel innovation. You can find out on Piro Newswire. So they they already currently have over a hundred thousand small businesses. And the software helps them manage their hourly team. And you and I don't see a lot of tech that's targeted right. directly at the SMB level. So I love that. I think it's good for them and their customers, mm-hmm. good for home base. It's hard to raise money. But, um, um, yeah, that's the bit. Yep. All right. Sesco, S-E-S-O, Sesso. Sesco. Inks $20 million to address U.S. farm labor shortages. This was at impactalpha.com. So you can go find it there. And when I read that, I thought to myself, when was the last time I thought about farm labor or farm talent? Hmm. Right? So when was well, the last time? Or, or I, I did when I started to do my taxes because it asked about non-farm wages, <laughs> <laughs> but that was it. Other than that, right? <laughs> Other like, than that, the thing about like right now we're in kind of a anti-immigration kind of a climate. Yeah. What mm-hmm. I don't really care about your politics, but it's it's one of those deals. Yeah. Okay. Someone's got to pick the fucking tomatoes. Yeah. Right. So I, I this is one why I think that this is so fascinating. This is a company that's actually trying to fix that and help bring talent to that particular market. So good for them. All right, all right. This one goes modal, M O D A L, raises twenty five million to train corporate workers on data and AI. This is the story that you talked about yep. of like literacy. And this is at TechCrunch, so you can just go look up Modal on, on TechCrunch. But what what's fascinating is it's learning plus data, or learning about data, it equals literacy. What I found the most fascinating about this is the two co-founders were ex-Udemy executives, the president and the CEO. So the president and the CEO went off, and now they created Modal to train people on data and AI. And so they, they know how to do learning. Like yeah. That's done. Now that's, it's just a matter of... Field. That's their field. That's, that's, that's what they're good at. So keep an eye on that because as a, as a company, you might want to look at some of the, the content for your own, you know, for yeah. your own, you might want to look at that for your own, you know, LMS or whatever to then start pushing that in to, like we said earlier in the program, increase literacy. Yeah, it increased literacy, literacy in particular. So, why don't you why don't you go and give give yeah. us a couple yourself? Well, modal was one of them. Damn it! Yep. <laughs> did okay. you have Did you have any t- uh, different takes on it though? No, you know it, it's it's um so I, I I didn't go too far into it. I mean everything that you said, yes, and I I I couldn't help but think money follows money. 
<laughs> that yeah. was kind of like where I was. Fair. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, well, you know, and it's yeah. No, but no, that's that's all I got. I mean, everything you said is is there, but I'll let you keep going, and all I'm right. gonna hit hit buttons. All right, sounds good. Team building platform Confetti raises sixteen million million. Trusted by Apple, Google, Microsoft, large company. Glo- uh, where I found this was globalvillagespace.com. And think of Confetti as a platform that enables companies to do virtual team building experiences, virtual games, interactive games, activities like baking and cocktail making. Like you can go back to the the pandemic and think of all that stuff that people did. Confetti does it all, like soup to nuts. And uh, so they manage the entire process, all the way supplies, the whole bit. Mm-hmm. So they got, got some money. And, you know, I thought of Julie, the crew, cruise director from Love Boat on steroids. <laughs> uh, so, so again, large companies, I mean, they pretty much say that in the, in the, in the release, Apple, Google, Microsoft, these aren't small companies, right? They, but they need to engage their workers in a different way. They need to engage their talent. They hire confetti. And then they basically basically pick through the different things that they'd like to do for their employees, or do they let the employees drive it? I think it's right. great. I I didn't even know the company existed, mm-hmm. so I think it's great. It's it's classified as a team building platform, right? I I I didn't even know Confetti existed, and so I'm I'm happy for them and their customers, uh, and I think it's just a cool play. I got three. I think I got three more to go. Do you have any? No, no, I'm out with funding. You, you're okay. all funding today. You take. Well, it's just a lot funding. of funding this week. A lot, a lot of funding this week. Pigment, and you read that right. Pigment raised 145 million dollars. Million dollars. Million. <laughs> One. I'm four, just assuming. Five. <laughs> One four five yeah. million to help businesses build strategic plans. I found this on Bulletin SF, SF, that's the uh, Made in San Francisco uh, site. So if you ever go there, that's they all they do is talk about San Francisco. But Pigment, here's what they here's what their their game is is to basically use AI to intuitively and intelligently build and adapt strategic plans. Right. So strategic plans. Uh, usually are very well not archaic but they're static so you it's build a, it's it it's a google doc yeah it's a yeah, kid it's a google doc right this is going to be with the use of ai real time strategic planning so as you as one thing over here changes this thing over here changes so that's interesting I was like, that, that's just fascinating now what i thought about it as i read the article i'm like how soon before that tackles workforce planning Right. Because workforce planning has never been done well. Uh and so if you've now if you've now got AI in your strategic plan, it's yeah. it goes to think that you're gonna have it in your talent plan or workforce plan. I, at some point I would assume yeah, may I don't know if this platform does that, right, but right, right, right. at some point something will yeah, you, you have this change here, this is what's what happens here. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It's so it's really hundred and forty five million dollars. Somebody that's Somebody thought that's it was a big cool. check, baby. <laughs> so, somebody <laughs> thought it was worth the money. Somebody got a Maserati. That's, yeah. what, I, that's what I read. So, uh, Italian startup Steps Connect picks up a million in euros to uh, find candidates quickly. So, you can find this on uh, www.eu startups.com. Um, and so what I liked about this particular side, because you and I could go build a recruiting application like mm-hmm. over the weekend. And so that's not that, that, that that's that's not newsworthy for me. But it, this one specifically does two things that are interesting to me. Gen Z and millennial. They focus just just on that talent. They don't care about any of the ta- other talent that's out there. They're focused on mm-hmm. that talent. and vertical fields of hourly. So retail, hospitality, okay. et cetera. So they're looking at, okay, with this talent, these verticals, and uh, they got a million in uh, a million in uh, euros, which is probably one four. No, that's probably seven hundred thousand. But 
I like I like the play because they're looking at tar- they're looking at talent in a way that instead of generalizing talent and saying okay come here and do this, right? We don't really care about your age or your or any of this other stuff or what industries they're niche. Like you and I talked about like old job boards like mm-hmm. accounting jobs in Vermont. Right, right. The only right. people that are going to care about that are accountants in Vermont. People, yeah, right. So this is different though because this is looking at the generational. Uh, parts of things. So, anyhow, take a look at them okay. uh, and see what you think. Steps connect. Okay, the last one I have on funding, that's our F for the uh, folks listening to the show. Home from College is the name of the company, by the way. Home yeah. from College raises $5.4 million in funding to build Gen Z focused job site and hiring platform. This is on PRNewsWire.com, so go to PRNewsWire. And uh, at first glance, first of all, five, you know, five million to basically build a job, you know, job site and a hiring platform. So something for both the candidates and for corporate. And again, it's it's uh, there's a theme in today in today where it's like meet the talent where they are. Gen Z searches for jobs differently. They think about jobs differently. So the models, we, we used to say the containers of yesterday are not the containers of today and won't be the containers of tomorrow. So it's fascinating to me. That's $5.4 million. Okay, that's a check. That's a, that's a Maserati. Mm-hmm. Yep, done. I, I just but, I, I, I get disinterested when I hear the word job board. <laughs> Haven't we done this? Yeah. Aren't, aren't we over this? Yeah, I mean, Fair no enough. knock on on the. I mean, congrats on the funding, and I and and I love 100%. to see actually what they're doing because it's interesting. But yeah. when I think inherently in my mind, when I hear job board. I, I go to yeah, I, yeah. You, you think a monster, yeah. career builder, career builder. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So for me, the 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 title that drew me in was home from college. So wait a minute, why 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 are you home from? college? <laughs> All right, once you leave, wait, you wait, leave. Wait, wait. Yeah, this is I'm, I'm, I'm a <laughs> channel my clear. father. Yeah. yeah. I, in fact, the yeah. comic Earthquake um, has a bit on this, where he says, "Once you turn 18, I go from being your father to your advisor." Yeah, I like it. I like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's a it's a great comedic bit because he basically says. When your son or daughter says something, you say, well, what I would advise you to do. <laughs> what I advise you to do is get the hell out of my house. So home from college, that freaked me out just there. I read that and I'm like, home from college? Wait yeah. a minute, what are we doing here? Yeah. Anyhow, I agree with you about job boards, but for 30 years, we predicted the death of the job board. It's still there. I don't think it's going away, right? The resume uh, ain't leaving it. The job board ain't leaving it. Like it's fundamental, right, to the jobs. I yeah. I get yeah. it. It'll be you, it'll be done in anymore. a different way. I don't yes. know what that different way is. It hasn't come around yet. I don't think it's a big deal to even talk about. Honestly, like they're there, yeah. they're there. Post your job, pay your three hundred bucks. Post your job and get some candidates. I think I think they're going to do more video. I haven't dug into it. We'll look, go look at the platform, but I think they're going to do more video, like TikTok job ads. Yeah, like that type of stuff that makes sense to me, but it's meeting the talent where they are. However, you do that, however that's you leverage key. that, yeah, that's the key. that's the key. And make it simple, please, for the love of God, make it simple <laughs> to apply. <laughs> like just just make it simple. All right, did, I think did we barf? Did I we think barf? we're done, man. Yeah, I think we went through it. We got everything in in on time this time. We Crazy, didn't go three and a half hours. Look Crazy. at that. So we could have. We like, could have, we could have, yeah. yeah. If you're if you're still watching, if you're still listening, listening please subscribe, please uh, check us out everywhere online, uh, uh, socially. Do you, feel like you're, do you feel like you're begging for money? I am, you that I am, I am. Please. <laughs> NPR does this bit like once a, I don't know how often, and it's their rate they raise money, so it's uh-huh. the oh, day, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's for a week, and they're stopped mm-hmm. down and. Every commercial is like, all right, yeah. on the campaign. Yeah, PBS does a whole thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, I can't listen. I, I That week, right. I don't listen to NPR. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. yeah. If I want to give you money, chat. I'll give you money. Yeah. I, to, get a, you chat. to get a mug? Yeah. Yeah, I don't need a mug. I'm good. Yeah. For but, uh, for one hundred dollars, you can get the Cindy Orman <laughs> CD. Exactly. <laughs> no. no, I'm good, man. 
But they, when you do that, subscribe and yeah, you know, it's like, what share. it feels like. Please subscribe to <laughs> us, please. No, but if you see us out there, at least say hi. Like we're not bad people. We come on you. now, come on now. All right, we'll see you next time. <laughs>